Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. Well, today we're just doing one topic. The chaos campaign. It's all falling apart. Boom, diving right in. Let's get all up in it. Well, boom, Charlie Kirk is conservative, staunch conservative. Anyway, uh, he's in the news. He is informing people. He is digging deep what's going on. He had a weird lead on a story that people should look into. He got a call from a source close to Las Vegas Metro, the police department. The official story was that Joe Biden's trip was cut short last week due to COVID. That's the official narrative. However, according to this source, U.S. Secret Service informed Las Vegas Metro that there was an emergency situation involving Joe Biden and to close necessary streets that POTUS could be transported immediately to University Medical, which they began to do in earnest. Then, mysteriously, there was a stand-down order and the U.S. Secret Service informed local Vegas Police Department that they were going to medevac POTUS to Johns Hopkins which they presumed meant fly him back east as soon as possible. Apparently, the rumor mill in the police department was that Joe Biden was dying or possibly already dead. I didn't think too much about this lead. Seemed too wild to be true, but given that Joe Biden has been out of public sight for days and dropped out of the race via X post, excuse me, what? Uh, and brother James indicated health was a fact. What? Health was a factor. I'm beginning to grow more curious if COVID or something else has been more serious than reported. If anyone within the Las Vegas Metro has information, please email freedom at charliekirk.com. I want to hear if there is more to the official story than what they're telling us. Of course, yeah. Let us know, Charlie. Let's see. Does he have an update? Well... Update, I've received multiple emails like this one confirming many elements of the story. Many have confirmed that a call went out to block streets to get Biden to University Medical Trauma Center ASAP, and then the plan abruptly changed and they got him out on Air Force One very quickly. I've not confirmed the IDs of these people, but there are an overwhelming number of stories corroborating essentially the same account that I felt comfortable sharing. I have people diving deeper into this now. So here's the email. Charlie, your info is solid. I retired from the uh, Las Vegas Metro in... My source texted me this just now. We were making plans to go to UMC Trauma first, called in the box squads to come help shut down the route. Then it changed to taking him to the airport. He was on the plan fast and took off faster than I ever seen Air Force One leave the airport. Interesting. Well, Laura Loomer, <clears throat> another journalist, uh, there's an FFA flight restriction that just went up in Wilmington, Delaware, where Joe Biden lives. The flight restriction is for VIP movement. This coincides with presidential movement. Joe Biden's health is declining rapidly, as I reported today. He is now in terminal stage of his illness. Today, Joe Biden's chief of staff held an emergency meeting with all White House staff. And there it is, uh, the report coming out of the AIR, the FFA, the American Flight Association, whatever it's called. Uh, yeah, okay, <clears throat> what else? Joe Biden is now in the terminal stage of his illness. Okay, what? This is what my medical source in D.C. has confirmed to me. I told you all weeks ago he had a medical emergency on Air Force One and that you'd be seeing resignations. Interesting, so she had the scoop. Everything I said is true. Most people don't know Air Force One has a full medical emergency triage center on the plane. There's even an operating room on Air Force One. Just because people don't know these things doesn't mean my reporting was incorrect. It just means I'm ahead of the curve. And congratulations, Laura, for that uh, pat on the back. What else? Top Democrats threatened to invoke the 25th Amendment to forcibly remove Biden from office unless he quit the race. Have alternative candidate to Kamala Harris. Hmm. Okay, well, uh, that would have been one reason to motivate him. So, eight weeks ago, leading into the debate, 
Everyone was like, vigor, active, intelligent, engaging. Fast forward to the day after the debate, and everyone's like, oh, man, there's a huge hole in that bag. Where did the cat go? Because he's out. And, yeah, everyone was like, okay, this guy here is, like, totally cognitively declined over his presidency. Who's running the country? Well, they went up to him and said, listen, Joe, it's not looking good. Uh, quit. And he's like, I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting. Even his staff was like, he's not quitting. He's not quitting. And then apparently Pelosi, Clinton, Obama, all these, like, big heads, old heads got involved and were like, Joe, if you don't, we're going to... Say you're crazy and you've lost your mind. Would you want that in the public? Is that how you want your legacy to be? Absolutely not. So he steps down. Biden drops at a presidential race. President endorses Kamala Harris almost immediately. And be careful pronouncing her name. It's not Kamala. It's Kamala. Or am I pronouncing it wrong? Because apparently it's racist to do that. Okay? Whatever. Kamala, Kamala, who cares? It's not racist. She has an interesting name that's different than Heather or Jennifer or Stephanie, what Americans are used to. Uh, president Joe Biden announced Sunday he's dropping into the presidential race. Minutes later, he endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris to be his successor. And why? Why so fast? Well, after he resigned, he canceled nine trips, extends his Delaware stay. Hmm. <clears throat> now, he had done this via X. Okay. The statement was put out via X, Twitter. No one knew this was even going on. No one in his staff had a clue. We covered this last uh, Monday. Biden, uh, or behind the curtain, the chaos campaign, here we go. So one candidate was shot in the ear, an assassin's bullet putting him inches from death. The other, quarantined with COVID, then quit his campaign, reluctantly and abruptly. That was just eight days of the wildest and weirdest presidential campaign of our lifetime. Why it matters. America is tossed into tumult, unseen since the 1960s. State of play. Republicans want President Biden to resign now and for Vice President Kamala Harris to be held complicit for concealing his condition. Yeah, they've pushed forward um, <clears throat> impeachment for Kamala Harris for not uh, doing her du duty as Vice President and informing the country that, hey, your leader, your chief, is insane. He's lost his mind. He After sundown? There's a thing called sundowning. He goes crazy. He walks around butt naked in the White House, apparently. Check it out. Many Democrats want to simply and swiftly coronate Harris, pair her with a swing state moderate like Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, a Jew, or someone of Jewish religion, don't want to say anything, uh, uh, a Semite. Is that what you'd say? Senator Mark Kelly and make age and abortion two permanent topics of new 2024 campaign. Yeah, abortion is the ticket. That's the only thing they have to hold on to. And Kamala has like the worst record. Her borders are uh, <clears throat> mega fail. What else has she done? She went down to South America and was like, don't come. Just don't come. And then guess what? 20 million people showed up at the door and now we're paying for them. Democrats have four weeks to pick a new ticket, completely reboot the campaign against a former president riding post-convention momentum and an assassination attempt. Everyone thinks he's a mega hero and a superstar. Scoop, Biden doubted Harris's election chances. So here's the deal. Um, why didn't he drop out sooner? Why didn't he endorse... Uh, or uh, one thing, um, <clears throat> Barack. Why didn't Barack endorse Harris right away? I mean, like... They're both of African-American descent, or they're brown or black, whatever. She's Indian and Jamaican. That's her parents. Her mom is Indian, and her dad's Jamaican, but she's a black woman, and she's a brown woman. She's both. She's whatever she wants to be, because that's what you get to do if you have mixed-race parents. So, like, you know, they used to call it mulatto. I think that's inappropriate now, uh, but it's basically a white parent and a black parent. And guess what? You could be black or white. You get that option. Maybe not in all cultures, they'll appreciate it, but yeah, you get to play that card. So Biden doubted Harris's election chances. That's why he didn't drop out. He was like, well, who's going to run? Kamala. Kamala. Whatever. He's like, she's terrible. Look what she did. All right, well, let's recap this historic day. Joe Biden suddenly resigns via Twitter, X. White House staff find out one minute later via X. 
Joe Biden's resignation letter is not on official letterhead. Doesn't have the seal, the American uh, United States of America seal. Biden's signature suspect. It's underlined. The B's all weird. Steve Ricchetti helped write a letter. Uh, Joe Biden tweets heart emoji response. White House wipes Biden's schedule. Yeah, they canceled those trips. Uh, White House chief of staff calls cabinet, manages comms. Frank Biden confirms health's a factor. Yeah, the reason why we just want him to like live out the rest of his presidency and enjoy his health. Like, you know, so what the heck's going on? Family suggests Biden may have terminal illness. Lots of people are conf- talking about it. It's conspiracy. People believe it. Is there any evidence? Joe Biden holds no live press conference. Where is Joe? It's been six, seven days. Where is he? Not a perfectly normal day. Totally normal. <clears throat> Well, Trump says he thinks Harris is no better than Biden in 2024 matchup. He's not worried about it. He knows. They've been preparing for this. They knew this. Like, Trump's not dumb. They see the writing on the wall ages ago. They're like, Trump was saying it. He's like, this guy can't have a conversation. I'm going to destroy him in the debate. And boom. Well, uh, what what do we have here? Emerging from the depths. Could it be? Quite the salute there. I mean, that's interesting to me. You know, like, uh, let's just look at this again while I comment. <clears throat> Here he is. He has COVID. Is he getting over it? They were giving him Paxlovid, which apparently is like some sort of therapeutic, similar to ivermectin, whatever. He looks a little bloated there in the neck. Maybe he's on some steroids. Maybe they're like literally pumping him full of everything. He's walking pretty good. A little bit of a stutter in his gait. He's going up the big stairs of Air Force One. And he's been taking the short stairs for so long. So uh, what's the deal here with Joe Biden? All right. What's the deal? Well, some people believe it's not even really him. Can you imagine? Well, have a look at this. Tell me what you think of this. Do you really know what's going on with celebrities? You can't tell me this is normal. Look at his forehead. This is bullshit. That's a mask. That's a skin mask. It ain't normal. Look at it. You can't believe anything you see these days. These glasses aren't even around. You might lose my face. All this stuff was 3D tracked on using these dots that I drew on with this marker. Actually, the marker isn't real either. Neither is the background. Or my face. Have a good night. These guys are central casting. There's nobody in Hollywood that looks like these people. These are hyper-realistic face masks. They're custom made in Japan using 3D facial scans and 3D... I mean, I'm not saying... But I'm suggesting for a fact. Definitely. Definitely a possibility. All right. Uh, The CIA came out. They did like a TED talk. And they were talking about like how much their technology has increased. Where like they could actually like go in and have a briefing with the president. And the president wouldn't even have any idea who they were talking to. They said they could have multiple versions of someone. But they only need one. And it was like ha ha ha. Well this was like 20 years ago. Okay, so what do you think the tech is now? Literally, like, come on. Was it Joe Biden? Is it Joe Biden? Maybe, likely, why not? Look like him. What's going on here? All right, the twin windows below the shooter yield the same exact trajectory, except it's a rising shot. 10 feet at POTUS, 12 feet at the bleachers. Uh, That's a shooter, not Echo's left or right window below the kid on the roof. Simultaneous gunfire. 
from the same point on the compass. Okay, let's look at what this guy here has going on here. Uh, this guy is big on uh, going against the official narrative. So let's just have a look. All right, so we got Thomas Crooks. Okay, he's on top of the roof up there. Come on. Right, so his line of sight there right to the president. Then we have the water tower, which apparently was obstructed by this Teletron. And then we have these two windows where there were... Um, local sharpshooters, the PD, okay, the police department. And then over here we have a different angle, so there is your blue line of sight that Thomas Crooks apparently shot at the president. And then we have the yellow line of sight, which would be local police department. So he's suggesting perhaps maybe this is a conspiracy and uh, the sniper shots were actually taken from below where Thomas Crooks is. And then we have the first shot the f that hit the railing. There's videos available here where this red person is and the yellow and blue and green lines converge. Okay? And then the water tower, of course. So what's going on with the bullet casings, the sounds? Okay? Like, everyone is talking about that. So, you know, it's just something to consider. Okay? What is the official narrative... Uh, so that's the person that was shot. What's her condition? So we don't know. Just something to consider. Well, anyway, uh, this was reported a week ago. SWAT team was local, okay? Not Secret Service. SWAT team was supposed to be on the roof, but opted for the floor below because it was hot. They reported the guy with weapons case to local police prior to him entering the building. Secret Service sniper couldn't take the shot immediately because he had to do, or sorry, de-conflict. It wasn't SWAT since there was supposed to be their primary location. His private security, former squadron guys are pissed. Complete show and failure. So yeah, there was supposed to be someone on the roof. Local PD, SWAT. But guess what? They went and saw it because it was too hot. So once the shots were fired off, the uh, Secret Service was like, huh, huh? And that's why you see when he's on that roof, he's kind of looking up and down and then eventually uh, moves his rifle and takes the shot. All right. Eli Crane, he's a representative. Uh, I'm on the roof where Trump shooter died. Questions for the Secret Service. Yeah, so what does he say? Uh, he's checking at the perch where Thomas Matthew Crooks fired at Donald Trump and he's questioning how the shooter slipped past the Secret Service. The Republican congressman from Arizona is in Butler, Pennsylvania, investigating the scene of the Trump rally shooting. And he's sharing video. All right, cool. Let's check it out. Let's see what he's got to say. All right, guys, I'm up here on the building where the uh, supposed sniper took a shot. It's not that steep at all. We just had a 70-year-old man back here climb up on the, uh, on the roof easily. See that water tower behind me? Had Secret Service or anybody had sniper teams up there, this guy wouldn't have made it um, five feet up this roof. Um, he would have been taken out. Behind me, you see the windows that uh, Secret Service was supposedly in the second floor of this building behind. It makes you wonder why they uh, weren't able to quickly dispatch the individual. Um, and then behind me, back over here where those red roofs are, that's where the stage was set up. That's where the president was giving his speech from. A lot of questions here in Butler, um, but we look forward to doing oversight. Yeah, so he interviewed uh, the missus, and it was insane. Well, here's Pat Fallon of Texas. Let's hear what he had to say with her. You know who the shooter knew? The shooter has visited the site two more times than you have, and he had a drone, and he picked the AGR building. So you said, do you remember in an ABC interview you did that you didn't have people on the roof of the AGR building because you were worried about safety because of the slope? I recall that statement. Okay. Does the Secret Service have written policy you can share with us about slope roofs? No. Okay. So why did you act like there was one? Because is it your practice to comment on enormous uh, nat events of nor enormous national implications when you're ignorant of the facts? That's rhetorical. So here's the thing with the slopes. 
you go all up to like 1812, you can go to a 112, which is about as flat as you can get without it being completely flat. And you're saying that there was a danger, uh, safety concern there, but the problem is, director, you put your counter snipers on a 312 roof, which is steeper than the 112. And by the way, the 112 is ADA compliant. You can build a, a ramp for a wheelchair on a 112 roof. So these are nothing but pathetic excuses, and they make no sense, and they're a bunch of cow dung. All the law enforcement I've spoken with over the last nine days are amazed that the AGR rooftop was not secure. You want to know why? Because it's dangerous. I have never had any long gun training in my life. I own an AR-15, and I, last time I shot it, I shot it one time my whole life, it was six years ago. That is until Saturday, where we recreated the events in Savoy, Texas. We recreated what happened in Butler. I was lying prone on a sloped roof at 130 yards at 6.30 at night. And I knew that he had a scope, I didn't know what kind, red dot, or magnified. So I shot eight rounds from both. You know what the result was? 15 out of 16 kill shots. And the one I missed would have hit the president's ear. That's a 94% success rate. And that shooter was a better shot than me. It is a miracle President Trump wasn't killed. Corey Compatore's life is over because that damn shooter made it on the roof. And it wasn't the roof that was dangerous. It was a nut job on top of the roof. You know what else is dangerous? I believe your horrifying ineptitude and your lack of skilled leadership is a disgrace. Your obfuscating today is shameful. And you should be fired immediately. Go back to Garden Doritos. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. There it is. Go back to Garden Doritos. Because she used to work for PepsiCo. There you go. Whatever. So anyway, uh, she sucks. Super hard. I didn't believe until right now a specific stand down order was given by Secret Service to leave the assassin alone. But now that we know Cheeto refused to record or archive the comms, huh? Or potentially even deleted them, I don't think there's any conclusion to draw. Well, they lost all the comms for the J6. Let's hear what she has to say about this. Uh, does the Secret Service routinely record communications between and amongst detail? Radio communications? Any communication. Email communications are uh, captured as well as uh, text messages. And then depending on the detail, uh, radio communications are recorded. Does the Secret Service have reporter communications from the July 13th event? We do not have radio communications from that day. Uh, does what? Like what? Isn't that like the most important thing you can have for that day? Is what they were talking about? Anyway, U.S. Secret Service Director steps down after disastrous hearing over Trump shooting. Kimberly Cheeto reverses course after defiantly telling lawmakers she would not step down. Yeah, see you later. Uh, Thomas Matthew Crook's dad services in public and bats down media questions. So if you don't know, this is what Matthew Crooks' father looked like. I believe it. It does look a lot like him. He's got that big chin, that gaping, uh, mouth-breathing face. For sure. And there he looks like he's stocking up on Gatorade, Pineapple Crush, possibly. Orange Crush, maybe. Anyway, we want to take care of ourselves right now. No comment. We found the assassin's connection through our in-depth analysis of mobile ad data to track movements of Crooks and his associates. To do this, we tracked devices that regularly visited both Crooks' home and place of work and followed them. And boom, look, all the way back and forth to Washington, D.C. This cannot be business as usual. Business as usual almost got real Donald Trump killed. Yeah. So uh, someone who regularly visited Crooks' homes and work also visited a building in Washington, D.C. located in Gallery Place. This is the same vicinity of in... FBI office on June 26, 2023. Whose device is this? And then uh, they went ahead. Another device linked to Crooks visited Plymouth, Massachusetts. We found a device linked to Crooks's work that traveled to Butler, Pennsylvania on July 4th and July 8th. This device stopped all activity July 12th. Interesting. On August 30th, 2023, one device linked to Crooks visited Allegheny Arms. Looks like a shooting range. Here's all the relevant locations within Bethel Park, Pennsylvania that are linked to both Crooks' home and place of work. So if you're interested, you can check out the Oversight Project at Oversight PR. And that's the same one there. Uh, had Trump been assassinated, Rothschild, banking family, BlackRock, uh, Vanguard, and the Bushes and the Cheneys stood to gain $696 billion, up to $1 trillion in profits. And how? Well... We talked about it. This group were shorting the stock. D 
DJT, Truth Social, uh, stock. They did it on Friday. But then Monday they were like, oh no, it was a big mistake. So uh, let's see. Just so we're clear, the Trump assassination attempt, security error. Oops. The Austin Privacy Wealth Trades, third party error. That's what they were talking about. They shorted it with $12 million or 12 million shares. They would have made a tremendous amount of money. But no, that was an error. CrowdStrike outage. Immediately after, the whole world goes dark, internet wise, pretty much, because a little error, a little software error. Oops. They think we're the dumbest people who have ever existed. Who is ready for the election error? Okay, a little foreshadowing. Perhaps something's going to happen during the election. Uh, but don't worry, U.S. taxpayers. Just to let you know that while you struggle to pay your rent, educate your kids, and save something for a rainy day, the Pentagon accidentally paid Zelensky an extra $6.2 billion of your money. Oops. Just a little accounting error. Following up from um, some announcements earlier this year, during the department's regular oversight of our execution of presidential drawdown authority for Ukraine, we discovered inconsistencies in equipment valuation for Ukraine. In a significant number of cases, services used replacement cost rather than net book value, thereby overestimating the value of the equipment drawn down from U.S. stock and provided to Ukraine. All right, they didn't send him an extra 6.2. They just said, oh, it's only worth this much, when actually it was worth way more. And meanwhile, Hamas has taken over the U.S. Capitol. What? Oh, my gosh. Have a look. All right, so it's gone. And uh, there is a pissed off whale patrolling the waters of Portsmouth, New Hampshire today. Head on a swivel if you're out there. <laughs> yeah, look out. Man overboard. Let's get out of here, he says. Yes, yeah, see you later. All right, people, there you have it. Um, wild world we live in. And uh, we'll keep you posted on Friday if there are any updates. Is Biden still alive or was it a robot? Is Kamala Harris actually the going to be the nominee? And why did they pick her so fast and so quickly? $96 million of donor dollars. Okay? That's why. Because if they went to open convention and chose someone else, all of that money they raised for Joe Biden would just poof, disappear. Sigma Tiger signing out.